Well, hello, everybody. I just got confirmation of something I've been wondering about for a long time. The computer told me that I am indeed alive, or at least, or maybe it just said you are live. Uh, but thank you for tuning in, everybody. We're really happy to have you here, and I'm very happy to have my two guests, uh, the two Christians, as uh, the joke I've made over and over again at this point. So I'm sure they're tired of it. But uh, and as I said before the show started, I'm going to let Kristen introduce herself. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. It's so good to be here. We, uh, I feel like uh, Chris and I both agree that you can never have too many Christians. So, like, whenever you have one of us, you should have both of us. Is how we right. how we see it. So, I'm Kristen Tate. Um, I run a freelance editing business called The Blue Garret. Um, so, I've been editing full time since oh seven or eight years now. I think. Um, yeah. So, I work with uh, mostly indie authors. So, you know, a lot of folks in your um, in your audience. I work mostly on fiction in a range of genres. So that's me, Kristen. Right. And I, <laughs> thank you, Kristen. <laughs> uh, and I am Kristen Tatro. And I just want to let you all know that no, Kristen and I did not talk about our outfits before this story. <laughs> We're just that in tune. They're just determined to confuse we are that the hell insane. out of me. Is what it is. On, on Thursdays, Christians wear black. That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm Kristen Tatro, and I'm also a freelance editor. I do not have a business name. I, I just work under my name. And I've been freelancing on and off for about 15 years. I, too, work on fiction. I also work on memoir and cookbooks. I have a culinary background. And I'm also an instructional designer, so I'm all over the place. But nice. I work primarily with indie authors, and um, that uh, pretty much sums up me. Very good. We we were talking about Venn diagrams before the show started. And, uh, <laughs> the two two of you have a Venn diagram. Apparently, the three of us have a Venn diagram. First of all, all of our initials are KT. <gasps> Has anybody noticed that? Oh my uh, gosh, mind blown! <laughs> and I used to do <laughs> instructional design for uh, the oil and gas industry. So how? How did That's we not talk not. about this at the writers' conference? You and I need to talk more know. about that, Kevin. We because need because I, yeah. I do instructional design for the oil and gas industry. And I'm glad you brought up the <laughs> writers' conference in vague terms. But we all met. Uh, we have met a, co a couple of times now, I believe, at at uh, the San Francisco Writers' Conference. Right. That's where you guys are. Are both of you in the Bay Area or or no? Yes, yep, that, that's part of the middle part of the Venn diagram. That's the middle part of the Venn diagram. <laughs> um, I'm in area. I'm in the other bay though. I'm down in Monterey Bay in Santa Cruz area, whereas Kristen yeah. is up in in the real Bay Area. In I San live Francisco. in Texas, so I have no idea what any of these places are. I, I only know <laughs> San Francisco. Everything within a hundred miles of San Francisco is San Francisco to me. So fair. Uh, that works for me. <laughs> so uh, and I write about San Francisco quite a bit now because I'm I'm always there. So I'm like, oh, that's a setting. I know well enough. So, um, nice. so uh, I want us to jump in because it came up a little before, and we've talked about this, and this is something both of you are involved in. Uh, but the you're both members of the San Francisco Bay chapter of the Editorial Freelancers Association. That's a that's a mouthful. <laughs> so we're just going to shorten that to EFA. Perfect. Which you guys said. I'm yes. not taking any credit for that. You guys actually said we should shorten that to EFA. So tell us a little bit about the EFA. Uh, yeah, sure. So it's a nationwide organization of about 3,000 um, editors, indexers, copywriters, ghostwriters, um, a lot of folks who work with words in different ways. And we're all independent freelancers. So, you know, whatever, um, you know, whatever you need for your book production, um, you can likely find one of our members who specialize in that. So um, okay. the really great part for authors is that if you go to the, the EFA website, which is uh, the dash EFA.org. I'm pretty sure. Yes. Um, there is, um, a directory that you can search by specialty and that drills down even to like genre specialties. You can, you can search and it'll, um, pop up, um, everyone who's a part of that. I think there's a hyphen. Did I get this there. right by the there, way? Yes. There is a, a hyphen. hyphen. We're, a we're hyphen. editing okay. here on okay. the fly. This, this <laughs> is right. what editors can, can do All for right. you. No pressure, uh, Kevin. It's okay. Nope. No, no, that's what we're <laughs> we're professionals. We're here it's, for it's all right. The Perfect. hyphen EFA. There we go. There it is on the screen, everybody. Uh, feel free to jot that down. And the so. really powerful tool. So this is what I recommend for people who um, have a very specific 
project or looking for something with, um, you know, very detailed uh, expertise or they're in a rush, there's a free job list service. So you can kind of write up all the parameters about your project, um, what your budget is, all of that, and submit it. And then that gets pushed out to all 3000 members. And then you'll get people in your inbox who think that they're a good fit for your work. So it's just an instant way to get uh pretty regularly a few dozen um, responses um, from folks who are are ready and available to work on your project. Very and nice. what's great about it is you can you can specify your budget. You okay. can put comments in there about particulars. You know, we I've seen listings where someone says, I really want someone who, l who knows the New England area because that's where it's set. Oh, um, yeah. Which is, it's nice to be able to specify that, but there are people like me who don't know the New England area, who might also be a good fit. And I might put my name in and yeah. say, Here, here's why I think I'm a good fit, even though I don't know the New England area. Yeah. Um, and then you can also go on the website and put in search parameters. If you are looking specifically for a ghost writer or an instructional designer actually is one of our categories. Oh, okay. Um, there's all sorts of categories and different criteria that you can use to search. So there's a couple of different ways to access. And as Kristen said, it's all free to authors. So there's no cost. No cost to, to search, but you still- To search, yes. Yeah, and, yeah. you got to specify that kind of thing. Yes. Like you, free <laughs> editing, all right. Yeah. <laughs> no free editing. <laughs> there's no free editing. So um, this, okay, so what would be the, uh, so is it all types of editors? Like, and what yeah. are some of the, t the categories of editors that, uh, that are out there? Oh, so we have like medical editors, technical editors. Um, I, Chris and I know an editor who one of her specialties is um, board game editing. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, we really, people um, find themselves in interesting little uh, niches. And yeah. uh, so you can find someone with very, very specific uh, experience in there. That's yeah. very cool. Have you ever, um, and, oh, I'm go sorry, ahead. Kevin. Oh, I was going to say, sorry. and in a broader sense, different types of editors, you know, we, we have editors who work on all the, the entire process of editing okay. from developmental editing or book coaching, which is creating the manuscript and right. looking at the big picture to line editing. Um, that is more looking at the language of the sentences. So you're drilling down to the paragraph or the sentence level to copy editing, which is more of the mechanical aspects of editing, like the grammar, the syntax, the punctuation, making sure words are spelled right, all the way to proofreading and indexing. You know, it's it's the whole gamut of the publishing process, really. Excellent. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask about that side of it, uh, especially like a lot of people are keen on developmental editing now. Um, and it, it's really difficult to find somebody who, uh, I, you know, is qualified, I guess, not qualified, but you know, I, how do you know if you've got a good developmental editor? <laughs> That's an excellent question. Okay. Um, I don't, do you mind if I take that one, Kristen? Go for it. As long as Kristen uh, answers. Yes. Excellent. Right. We're good. <laughs> this I can tell is going to be the long running joke. We <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll try to. That's Every, okay. Everyone I work with right now is rolling their eyes. So, <laughs> so it's all um, right. <laughs> um, we are used to it and we enjoy it. Um, so I am actually a developmental editor. I do developmental editing as well as copy editing. And there is no certification out there. If you are an author looking to hire a developmental editor, you want someone who reads in your genre. So for instance, yeah. I will copy edit horror and mysteries and thrillers but I won't do developmental editing on them simply because I don't read them. And so I don't know the genre well enough. Hmm. Um, you want someone who knows the basics of how a nar narrative works. You want someone who knows how to, you know, how the characters work with the story. Are they, are those characters actually going to propel the narrative? Yeah. Are they, you know, it's, I've had some very difficult conversations with clients where I'm going, I know this character is wonderful and you, you wrote them beautifully, but we need to ax them because they're not doing anything for your story. Just, you know, we, we're not gonna kill them. We're gonna just put them in their own little folder and you'll save them for a future project. So we're right. just kind of putting them in their own happy little holding cell or farm. <laughs> <laughs> not that kind of farm. Not that kind of farm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, it's really hard to do a sample edit for a developmental edit because developmental edit, you're looking at the entire manuscript, right? Um, you can do a sample edit for copy editing 
and you can show them how you would mark up mechanics. But with developmental editing, it's really hard to get a sense of how your editor is going to mark things up for you. So really it's a bigger conversation in the querying process. I have a questionnaire and I think Kristen, you also do this too, um, as part of my querying process, seeing if we'll be a good fit for each other, uh, me and the author and say, you know, what are you looking for? What are your, what parts of your manuscript are you really feeling strong are strong? What parts of your manuscript do you feel need some help? What are you expecting out of this relationship? So that's where the conversation comes in. Yeah. Yeah. And I would add to that. I mean, I think, I mean, absolutely. Like look for someone who knows and loves your genre, um, yeah. really knows the tropes. And then also um, look at uh, that person's communication style. Because that is going to, you know, so much of the developmental editing process is about communication. Is is this editor going to, are they going to be able to deliver the feedback you need, but also are they going to deliver it in the way that you can hear it and, and use right. constructively? And they're just, you know, some people really like... Um, folks who are super direct and just kind of lay everything out. Um, some people like um, a little bit more handholding or like some coaching kind of after they get their, their feedback. Um, so they can kind of get some help as they, you know, go from getting that feedback to getting into the revision process. Um, some people like to get on zoom calls, you know, some people like to work just over email. So, you know, those are things to, to think about. Um, and I, I don't, Kristen's right that it's it's hard to do kind of a sample edit for developmental editing, yeah. but I will when I'm starting to to talk to a new potential client, I'll ask them to send me their first few chapters and I will send back just some kind of, you know, feedback on the first few pages, like basically kind of my observations about you know, this is working really beautifully. Have you thought about this? Here's another spot where, you know, I was confused or you missed an opportunity maybe here. So they get a sense of like just my communication style. Um, so I would encourage folks who are looking for a new editor to like pay attention to your gut and, you know, find someone who knows their stuff, but also, you know, make sure you're paying attention to kind of how you like to communicate just with people in everyday life, because that's going to really impact your relationship with your yeah. editor. Finding the right editor is like finding the right therapist. Yes. Absolutely. For reals. Yeah. Um, Jenny Lawson, the blog S was our hey, keynote speaker. That's a good at our... friend of mine, Jenny. Oh, really? Yeah. She's amazing. Yeah, Texas. Yeah. <laughs> she like, she put ice packs in her shirt during her keynote speech. And she's like, I'm just keeping it real y'all. And we're like, we love you. <laughs> um, but she was our keynote speaker at our recent ACES conference. And, um, she that she said that I've heard that before, but it was validating hearing it from a best-selling author who is well known. Um, it it really is. I mean, I've certainly come across projects that I would have loved to have worked on, but I could just see that we weren't going to be a good fit. And so uh, yeah. the beautiful thing yeah. about the EFA is we editors talk to each other, the members talk to each other, and I mm -hmm. happily refer out projects that I either don't have time for or not a good fit to yeah. my colleagues. And I've those are vetted, trusted colleagues. Yeah. Yeah. So what uh, I'm, I got to ask this, this kind of question, because I know people are thinking it like, what's the advantage of, of going with the EFA over, say, going to Fiverr or some other like <sighs> freelancer service to find an editor? I mean, I, I think the big thing is when you are, you know, we pay a membership fee to belong to the organization and the okay. EFA also helps train editors. There are classes all the time. You know, we have our chapter hosts meetings where we bring in other editors and um, specialists. So, you know, when you're when you're communicating with those editors, you know, you have folks who are taking their profession seriously. They've been in the business for a while. They are connected enough to know that this organization exists and they've, you know, put some mm -hmm. money into, um, you know, joining it to be part of their resources. So, you know, that's part of it is just having someone who's not, a, um, you know, I'm sure there are college students who are excellent editors, but also maybe not as experienced. Um, so, you know, I think that's a, a big thing. It's, you know, we don't have a certification process, but um, working with someone who is a member of our organization just means that you've got someone who is at least linked in to all of these uh, educational resources and professional development opportunities. 
Yeah. And if you're a self-publishing author who is looking for an editor, <clears throat> ask your potential editor what kind of professional development they've done, what kind of background they've yeah. done that relates to your project. You know, it's it's just like hiring any professional. Yeah. You wouldn't yeah. just hire the cheapest plumber. I'm, I'm borrowing Kristen's analogy here. I've heard this one before. So full disclosure, this is Kristen's analogy, not mine. <laughs> 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 that, um, you know, I mean, sure, you could hire the cheapest plumber. It, it depends on how much you feel like rolling the dice. Yeah. And yeah. I feel I, there are some excellent colleagues who work on Fiverr and work on Fiverr Pro. And so I'm not trying to be smirch Fiverr at all. But yeah. what I have seen largely is a race to the bottom, unfortunately. Um, and if all you're doing is going for the, the cheapest professional, then you're probably going to get what you paid for, yeah. sadly. Um, you want the plumber who can say, here, you know, here is all of my years of experience. Here are all the different types of plumbing I've worked with. Same thing with an editor. Yeah. Here, here are my testimonials. Go to my website, go to my bio and the EFA. Um, and you don't find that with Fiverr. Um, yeah. I will also say that there are members in Fiverr who are not native English speakers. Um, that is not to say that a non-native English speaker can't be a good English editor. Yeah. Um, but I do see, I, I love the global economy. However... Um, I do see that there are some listings there where they say, oh, I can do a developmental edit on your entire novel for $250. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would hesitate at that. If you see that listing, it sounds enticing, but again, you're probably going to get what you pay for. Yeah. And I frequently, whenever I've used editors like that, I've gotten results that I, you know, change. here's the problems. Here's your list. And I'll look through them like, okay, so that's not an error. That's not misspelled. <laughs> That's not. Right. And so I get a lot of that. And it's usually because they're uh, maybe they are uh, UK English or something. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes that happens. So, uh, well, good. Okay. Yeah. And like you said, we don't want to dog on uh, no. Fiverr, but um, yeah, if you can go to an organization with filled with professionals that talk to each other and, and train each other, that's gotta yeah. be a, an advantage. Um, so each of you, have, both of you have, your, your own independent editing practices, right? Uh -huh. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about your individual processes, your editing processes, and I'll, I'll let you guys scrap it out on who goes first, but. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? You want me to dive in first? Go for it. All right. All right. Um, well, so for me, it really depends on what kind of editing I'm doing. I do like um, Kristen Ticho. I do both developmental editing and uh, copy slash line editing. So, you know, developmental editing um, depends on how kind of intensive I'm going to be. So I offer a manuscript evaluation, which means I'm just doing one read through of the of the novel. I usually do that on a tablet. Sometimes I print it out, actually. <laughs> Sorry, trees. Um, because, you know, we just, I mean, we're all staring at computers so much. It's sometimes yeah. a nice opportunity to get away and I'll just like work on, on pencil and paper. Um, and I take notes and then at the end of my read through, I'll write up a big, um, editorial letter for the author. That's kind of the main thing they, they get back with, you know, broken down into kind of categories about what's, what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses? And then when we get into those, those areas for improvement, you know, all different kinds of categories, depending on what's going on in the book. So point of view or character arcs or whatever. And then usually there's a list of kind of just like a punch list of, of individual things that I noticed. Um, and then if I'm doing, if I'm doing kind of a full content edit, um, I also will then go back and do a second read um, where I do comments directly on the manuscript that kind of, you know, show examples or are more detailed. Um, so that's what a content edit looks like. Um, and then a copy edit is actually quite different because then I need, I'm sitting in front of this enormous screen right now. And I've, you know, I have my, um, what's called a style sheet, which is what, again, this is where like a trained editor, like this is how we're right. trained to do this. So our style sheet is kind of like the rule book we're creating for your book. Um, it's about, you know, what kind of spelling you're using. Do you like to spell T-shirt with a capital T hyphen shirt? Or do you like to spell it two words, T-E-E -E shirt, right? We're tracking all of those like little things in your document to make sure it's consistent. We're fact checking names. So I'll also have up a little window with um, Merriam-Webster dictionary in it, 
with Google where I'm like sending things over to be fact checked and I have my manuscript in the middle and just it really is going through you know, word by word, line by line with a fine tooth comb, like is, you know, is everything in a sentence correct? Um, is it, is it clear? And then like, is it elegant, right? Is there, is there a tweak I can see that would make this, uh, you know, seeing, you know, yeah. make it even better than it already is. Um, so yeah, so that, that's my process uh, for those two things. And we do, um, editors tend to have very different, uh, like when we get into the details, like we all have very different ways of, of handling things. So yeah. absolutely. But then we also have some similar things. So I'll, I'll compare apples to apples here. My manuscript critique service is exactly the way I do exactly the way that Kristen does it. Um, I also offer for, so Kristen calls her um, content editing is what I call my developmental editing. Same thing. Uh, there, are, there are different names, you know. Yeah, uh, it's a harder for authors. Yeah. Yeah. It's just. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, <laughs> the thing, the thing that you will hear from editors more than anything is consistency is a key above right. all things. Yeah. We, like Kristen said, in your manuscript, it's up to you whether you want the capital T or you want to spell it out lowercase T E E for T-shirt. By the way, the correct way is the capital T. I'm just going to throw it out there. <laughs> the Kevin Tumlinson style It's named for style the letter T. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you're going you're gonna to get us into the Oxford comedy. No, no. Too, aren't oh, you? Oxford, okay. No, I was no. like, like, okay, we need to pull up Google Ingram right now. <laughs> well, like, we can answer this question. Like, which is more popular? <laughs> but that's not, that's not the answer, right, Kristen? It's not what's more popular. He said this was what was correct. And here's the thing. What's correct is what the author <laughs> wants it to be. Yeah. We this editors may not agree with it. We definitely have our own opinions. <laughs> but I have to end, know, though, where do we stand on Oxford comma? I know where I stand on the Oxford comma. Okay, I'll digress to that. I'm I'm a fan of the Oxford <laughs> comma. I, I, am. I am all for making things as clear as possible. Yeah. Okay, that's one vote. Yeah, you can't go, like, you're not going to go wrong if the Oxford comma is there. You okay. can get really, you can really have unintended meetings if you leave that's, it out. So it's always safe to have it. I yeah. always feel feel like that's a better default because at least yep. you, because you can do the sentence without it just fine. But if you include it, you're not going to mess anything up. And yeah. here's the thing. There is so much more going on in the world right now to get all upset about. Than no, Oxford there's comma. not. There's not, there's I just not. feel like it's a settled, like we've settled it's, it. Like the, we all agree. It's, it's Oxford comma. It. It's capital, capital T. It's, it's GIF. <laughs> GIF, not GIF. GIF, not GIF. Every, that's an internal debate at draft to digital by the way. Oh, I'm team yeah. GIF. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's stand like most that's rational how you people are the acronym. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but here's the thing. And I tell all of my clients this. In the end, I may, I know will, I've coined this phrase from another editor who coined it from someone else. I'm a coin operated editor. If you want it to be spelled T E E dash S H I R T, cool. I'll put it yeah. in your style sheet. And for your manuscript, that is the way it will be spelled. I will make sure yeah. it's consistent throughout. Um, yeah. I will have my personal opinions about it and I'll vent to my cat about it and go, <laughs> what are they thinking? But yeah. with you, I will be professional and go, awesome. Everything is spelled T E E. That's right. That's All what right. we do. Um, but as far as process, um, my, my processes are very similar to Kristen's. I will also do a follow-up with my clients um, with a manuscript critique and a developmental edit. I have them schedule an hour-long follow-up via Zoom. It's included in their fee. Yeah. And I ask them okay. to do that a month or two after they've had time to digest my comments. Uh, the first thing I tell them when I return their manuscript is, go ahead and read through it tonight. And then I want you to put it away yeah. because you will inevitably be upset at me. It's normal. It's hard. It, yeah. I I hate it. I hate that I do that, but I do. I don't say anything, but I'm like cussing <laughs> under my breath the whole time I'm looking at it. It's like, what the hell, you know? And 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 I think that's a natural response because it's sure. you're messing with someone's words, right? So. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think that. messing with is a little bit strong. You're we messing are, with. We Come are on. gently <laughs> pointing out how your words can be improved from the author's perspective. <laughs> We're screwing with your words. You're yeah, screwing absolutely. with our words. No, but uh, <laughs> do you? Uh, so how do you? When you get that backlash, and I'm sure you do. Like, mm -hmm. what's the diplomatic way to deal with with that sort of thing? I, you know, I say, you know, I'm 
I mean, I've not had anyone really explode at me. I've had someone yeah. say it's really hard to read this. Like, I'm feeling like I shouldn't even be writing. And so there, there comes the, yeah. the kind of therapist side of things, yeah. especially with first time authors say, I have my work critiqued. It's hard to hear someone say this could sound better when you have labored over that one sentence for hours and yes. you've gotten it perfect and the syntax is great and the, you know, you've chosen just the right words. And then they point it out. Um, that's why I asked them to take a step back. I asked them to take a step back and give it at least a day or you know, ideally a week, go back, read the comments again. And all of my clients have said it was great taking that time because they were able to read it from a non-emotional standpoint. And they say, okay, I agree with this. I don't agree with this. And they were able right. to have a conversation with me. And I've had clients where I pointed out something going, I think that this would be stronger if you did X, Y, or Z. And they come back and, well, I want to do it this way because of this. And I said, ah, that's a good point. Then what if we were to do this here instead to strengthen your point? Um, it's it's all a back and forth conversation. Um, I, I don't take it personally. Well, I try not to take it personally. Yeah. Uh, I, I try to remember that I too am a writer. Uh, yeah. I, I too am a creative person. It's really hard to get that outside feedback. But in the end, that's what authors are doing. You're going to want to put it out there in the world. And yeah. so you have to be open to that. Also, your readers are not always going to receive your work this, the way you intend it. So, so, by the way, that brings up a good question. Yes. And one I've, I've wondered about a lot because, I, you know, I've tried. I, I am not an editor. I, I admire what you guys do, but I could never do it. Uh, I'm a writer and that's it. But um, when you get a manuscript from someone and is it difficult if you're not interested in it, if it's not resonating with you as, as literature, is it difficult to do the edit? It makes it harder. I do. Yeah. Think. And that's again, why, you know, I, I don't take every project that comes in the door, right? Like, yeah. because that's, I would be, if I work on something like that, that's doing the author a disservice ultimately. Right. So that's right. when I say, Hey, go like, go check out the EFA directory or my colleague, Kristen teacher, I think would be mm. a perfect fit for this. Yeah. Um, that said, like there are always moments during, I mean, like this is work for us, just like it, you know, just as for writers, there's a point where you're like, I, I hate this. Why am I doing this? I want to quit. And of course we have moments like that too. And I think, you know, we were just talking about readers, like that's the way if I feel disengaged at any point or just, you know, I'm fatigued or whatever. I try to think about the readers down the, down the road. I find that very, um, you know, inspiring oh, yeah. and invigorating. Right. So like our job as editors is to be kind of, um, an author's reader stand in. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, like I try to, you know, I let know, I, you know, when I'm doing comments in the manuscript, like there are all these like LOLs and ha ha's and I like, I'm trying to give them my reaction because they, you know, authors don't really get that directly from their readers That's unless exactly they're, right. they're doing yeah. an author event or something. So, you know, that's what I try to do is just, I, I'm a reader. I read all the time, constantly. Yeah. I love, you know, I just love what books can do for us. And so, you know, I just try to reconnect with myself as a reader and think about the other readers that this, this text is going to get to eventually. Uh, right. If I get to a point where I'm flagging at all. Um, yeah. Cause it does happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I would agree with that. Um, like Kristen said, this is our work. This is our livelihood. Um, I've certainly taken on projects that if I was given the choice, I probably wouldn't have taken on, but I needed to fill my calendar because I need right. money to live. Um, <laughs> what, what we just, <laughs> I know. So sorry, all we do not just do this for fun. We do this to pay the bills. <laughs> well, that's just disappointing, right? <laughs> I know. How dare we? We're just capitalists. Yeah. Um, but, um, but even even in the I, I shall I say drier work that I do, yeah. Um, I I too take that standpoint. I'm trying to think of the end user, whether that be a learner, if I'm if I'm copy editing courses or doing course consultation or um, you know copy editing instruction manuals. Yeah. Technical. Well, you know, Kevin, you know some of that technical yeah. stuff. It's not exactly enthralling. Yeah. Uh, but no Pulitzers coming from no, that, that sector yeah. of writing. <laughs> but I, I take enjoyment just from the act of editing. I, I, I take this perverse joy in knowing that I've cleaned up a little part of the world and yeah. I've taken all of these little typos out of it. And 
it's it's out there and it's cleaner and it's better. <laughs> yes. No matter the smallest project up to the biggest project. I, I have to say, by the way, um, looping back slightly, you know, the idea of putting little comments in the margins or something and you know, saying, pointing out where you saw th thought something was funny or what, you know, that is all. I think that's invaluable. That's almost more valuable to me than fixing typos and telling me, you know, you name this character Karen and she's uh, Kathy in chapter three or whatever. I mean, that's all I'm almost going to value that stuff more because we don't get that feedback at all until yeah. maybe later, maybe like, yeah. you know, we've craft, we'll craft some incredible sentences and we never hear whether, any, whether they landed or not, you know? Yeah. Well, so. and that's part of like, you know, that also helps authors hear the tougher stuff, right? Yes. Yeah. You know, like I, you know, my editorial uh, letters, I don't know where I picked this up from. This is not my invention, but like the, the concept of the praise sandwich, right? You want yeah, like, to start with like, start with the good stuff, right? Yeah. And then we talk about areas to improve. And then, you know, at the end of those letters, I also remind authors that like, this is, this is their book, right? This is not my book. It's their book. And as Kristen Teacher was saying, like, there's always, even if they disagree with whatever idea I might have floated for how to make something better, as long as they get to the point where they agree that it could be better, they can always find and often do find an even better idea for how to improve it. Right. So, you know, I've given them X, Y, Z, but then they come back and they have found A and that is brilliant. Right. It's even better. So, um, you know, that's just a, a way to. Um, to help things along. And also, yeah. you know, if writers know what they're doing well and know what their strengths are, then they can lean on those in yes. future projects. Right. Yes. So it's just a win-win for everyone. Do you, One do of the you most... see, I'm sorry, Christian. Sorry. Please. I just keep talking over you, Kevin. I know you to... don't, you don't. I, we, I don't want to hear you we, talk. I just want to talk at the same talking. time. No, you're, that's what we're here for. <laughs> we're here. No, everybody hears me all the time. So you go ahead. <laughs> no, I was going to say, I a hundred percent agree with everything Kristen said. I'm saying you're going, yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Um, one of the most gratifying parts of our jobs, it, our job is seeing writers take into their next work or it further along in their manuscript yes. comments that we've made um, and tips that we've, we've made and absorb that in their writing craft. I, I tell all my clients, my hope is that by the end of this project, you will have strengthened your craft even more to carry you into your next project. Yeah. Um, I see comments all the time on my social media groups, my editing social media groups, where they say, this author came back to me for a second book and it was amazing seeing them tighten up their dialogue and then not use uh, a bunch of thesaurus words. Like, it's, it, okay, full disclosure, it's really obvious when y'all are going to the thesaurus, everybody. <laughs> um, please don't tie yourself in knots trying to find another word for said. <laughs> You're just going to make yourself anxious. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know it's like Kristen said we need to tell people what they're doing right so they can build on that yeah and you know then correct the things that that can be corrected and just continue to be better and better yeah speaking of thesaurus words uh we have a question <laughs> yes. from stardust who is trying to trip me up uh what is your feeling? What is your feelings about using grandiloquent words in fiction? Is it a speed bump? See, you tried to trip me up, Stardust, but I came back at you. <laughs> I mean, I think you have to be really careful, right? Mm -hmm. Like, have you have you earned that word? I think yeah. is you yeah. know, is it going to does it fit in with what is around it, right? If you're using a kind of a showstopper word, do you do you want readers to stop right there, right? Yeah. Do you want them to notice the word or are you in the middle of like a high, high stakes, high action scene, fast paced scene, and you want them to keep going? I mean, that's not the place to put in your $5 word, right? So, you know, it really is a case by case basis. And as, as Kristen Tatro was saying, like, please don't, don't do this in your dialogue tags. Like said is totally <laughs> fine. Like yeah. it's, it's fine. Just use said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You use the word healthy instead of salubrious. I love salubrious. It's one of my favorite words, uh, but yeah. Yeah. Salubrious. I, it, it rolls off the tongue though. It just... <laughs> does. <laughs> but is, are your, is your intention to send your readers to a dictionary? Maybe. every other sentence or every paragraph. Yeah. You know, it's it, like Kristen's Tate said, it's the context. Yeah. It, 
if you're in a fiction that's an easy read, you know, if we're talking romance, that's a happily ever after, your readers are not going to want to be stopped for the most part. I, I know I'm making a blanket statement here, but for the most part, your readers are not going to want to be stopped in the middle of that scene. Right. And you know right. what scene I'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> to describe actions. Um, yeah. A lot of that stuff tends to read almost as parody. Um, yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm in the middle of uh, first round edits on something right now. And I have a character though, who use drops the five letter words, every other word. And then you'll have others kind of comment on it. So that is a different scenario yeah. where you, you, you know, you, even if you're not defining that, those terms for the reader, uh, the reader's going to pick up on, okay, this is being done on purpose. Like I'm supposed to be confused by what this, this arrogant guy is saying. Perfect. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's yeah. part of the character Yeah, right. you know, character voice. I think that's right. great. That's a great way to kind of distinguish. And I think what writers forget is like, there's, there's so much you can do just with like sentence variation and where, you know, where you put a verb versus, you know, a, your subject in the sentence um, and, you know, having a bunch of long sentences and then like a really short punchy one. Yeah. There's just mm -hmm. so much you can do there. It's not uh, word choice is really, far down the the ladder of things that you can you can play with yeah uh more questions let's see this hey. is from uh, lexi green are there things authors can do to be easier to work with as an editor uh you're all you're all superstars in our book everyone's, everyone's easy to work with. <laughs> you'd say that though. yeah I mean, <laughs> Also, I'm open for bookings in October. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll go and take this one, if, uh, lead on this yeah. one, Kristen, if you're okay with that. Yeah. We're not really this nice in real life, everyone. This is just us being professional. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, well, this is more something easier for you. Don't come into this with a preconception that your editor is going to steal your work or judge you on your work. I promise you, I'm not judging your work. I am taking my professional eye to your work. Yeah. Um, I, I have my own personal opinions, but that's not what you're hiring me for. You're hiring me to look at it with an editorial eye and to help you create a better version of your manuscript. It's, you know, we're, we're artists. All of us are artists. Um, the, Kristen mentioned the style sheet. We, uh, I'm, I'm in the middle of revamping my website, but I'm going to put up on my website, probably in the new year, a kind of a template for a style sheet that I want to provide to my clients. It's actually a great exercise for you as an author to, especially if you've made up names or mm -hmm. proper names of places or people or things to create a style sheet in alphabetical order of all of how all of these words are spelled. If you supply that to your editor, yeah, we will praise you to the ends of the earth. Yeah. Because yeah, you will you will also be saving us time and effort in terms of like our attention span creating mm -hmm. that. So if we already have a, a style sheet to build on, that's fantastic. We will be double checking that style sheet to make sure it's consistent. <laughs> but, right, right. Um, and also, uh, we hear this a lot. We love that you're confident about your work. We love that you're excited. Um, and I'll probably lose some fans here, but... Um, please don't come to us and tell us that your book is going to be a bestseller. Yeah. Just, I'm, just avoid I'm, saying that phrase yeah. to anybody, honestly. I really you, hope it is. Yeah. I, I absolutely hope it is. Right. That's not to say we don't want your book to be a bestseller, no. it's, but you can't know that. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can say, I hope this will be a bestseller. Like telling me it's, you yeah. hope it's going to be a bestseller is completely different from this is going to be a bestseller. Yeah. So. You know, so you don't should screw be honored it up. To work Is that the it. implication? Like, there, if it's not a bestseller, I know it's because of you. <laughs> you know that that is a risk. I mean, that, that's right. a risk we take in our professions. I you know, I haven't had it happen to me personally, but anecdotally, I've heard it from colleagues who say that their authors have come back okay. and gotten upset because their book isn't selling. I'm yeah. really sorry to hear that, but we edit your book. We're helping you create right. the product. It is up to you to market it and get it out there in the world, which is um part of what draft to digital does so you know we do everything up to draft to digitals yes. where draft to digital steps in right and then we take care of most of the rest yes um so we got a follow-up question on uh the style sheet thing and this is a good question how does how does one create a style sheet yeah is it just so, a bullet list 
Well, okay. So there are different, I have one on my website as well, but again, like this is something where like, if you ask 10 editors to, to show, show yeah. their style sheets, <laughs> like they're all going to look different. So, right. um, you know, in part, you know, it, it definitely can be faster if, you know, an author, for example, gives me a list of character names. So like, you know, on my style sheets, I have a list of just kind of general rules. Like we're, our dictionary for this project is Merriam-Webster or it's, you know, Oxford, depending on what kind of, what, what part of global English we're, we're using. <laughs> right. um, and things like, you know, are we, are we using Oxford comma? Those kinds of things. So like rules for your whole book. Um, and then I have a section of all, all the character names and then kind of any details that they have, especially things that, you know, eye color is like notorious for, for changing across right. the manuscript or if someone right. has a tattoo or whatever, anything that might come back up. Um, I'll, I'll put that on the style sheet, um, not just for that book, but especially for writers who are writing in series, you know, those things can come up four books down the line. And then if it's on the style sheet, we don't have to go search for it in book one. It's just there, you know. So if yep. it was in the book, you know, it goes on the style sheet. Um, and then I also do a timeline for all novels because inevitably there'll be something like, well, you know, last Saturday they were at such and such, and such place. Yeah. And actually, if you kind of look back with the dates, it doesn't all pan out. Um, and I work on a lot of mystery novels. And that's, you know, for readers who are trying to follow along and like solve the mystery alongside the detective character or whatever, that's really frustrating. So yeah, I don't want yeah. them to follow up on a clue that should be correct and isn't. So I have, I do kind of a timeline to make sure everything matches up. And then there's um, below that there's a terms list. And this is something that, that all copy editors will have. So, you know, where we're, it's just a list of spellings um, that we've looked up or spellings that can be different ways. So like, okay, is another one that I almost always have on a style sheet. Do you prefer um, toward or towards? You know, right? Like this is right. these are those like subtle things where we're trained to do this as copy editors. Um, readers might not ever notice this, but I do kind of feel like it just makes your book. This is this is what a traditional publisher would do for your book, and so our job is to know what traditional publishers are doing and to give you the same experience, right? So you know, there is just a kind of a, a subtle thing of making sure all those tiny little details are exactly right. So, you know, if an author comes to me with a style sheet, um, you know, I will start from that. And then I double check it, as Kristen Teacher was saying, going along, because we you know, do, the, uh, you know, the timeline thing alone would be something I would be willing to pay for, because yeah. I could very much use timelines on all my books. So. I'm pretty it's kind of amazing when you, it's kind of amazing when you have a character who you the character's pregnant, yeah. the character has the baby, but your yeah. timeline is only two weeks long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or or 27 months later, yeah, she's right. giving birth. Either way. Uh, um, yeah. I, I will. Happen, I, Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. I just want to add one comment about the style okay. sheet. It is also a useful tool for your proofreader. Proofreaders yes. need those style sheets because. Um, Proofreading is different than copy editing. Yeah. So, but here I'm going to throw y'all a curve again. Some editors call their light copy editing service proofreading. Yeah. Because our clients, they they say, oh, this just needs a proofread. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, it actually needs a developmental edit. I'm sorry to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> or or it doesn't need a proofread. It needs it just needs a copy edit. And what you're calling a proofread actually is a copy edit. So. True proofreading is comparing the next to like the, what the book will look like compared to the last version of your manuscript, making sure that all of those editing um, editing ticks are were taken care of. All of the corrections were actually made. Nothing has gotten weird with formatting between the last version and this version. Um, and proofreaders need those style sheets to make sure that everything is still consistent in there because proofreaders yeah. are the last set of eyes on your manuscript before it gets published. Oh, that's a good way to look at it. Huh. Um, one, we got one last question here. This is actually coming from our mutual friend, Jim Asvito. Jim. Uh, <laughs> yes. He says, I've had authors tell me they don't need an editor because they were an English, ma English or journalism major. How do you mm -hmm. convince someone like that? I mean, I think this is, again, where the training comes in, right? So, mm -hmm. like, you know, 
you want to hire an editor who has been trained as a copy editor. So we yeah. use um, for book publishing in particular, we use Chicago Manual of Style. Totally different from what they use in journalism. They use AP style, right? Which means no Oxford mm -hmm. comma. There are different capitalization rules, actually a lot of different things that are different. And if you're applying those rules or those things that you're familiar with, which you probably are, you were trained to do certain things certain ways, yeah. it's actually going to end up not, it's going to read like magazine writing and not like a book, right? And those and readers pick up on those subtle differences. So th that's part of what we're doing is we're applying kind of, you know, book style to your, to your manuscript. Right. I'm going to tell you, by the way, that English majors in, in general make terrible editors. <laughs> hey, I, I mean, I started as an English major. So I, I, I'm an, I am also an English major, but it's, gotcha. it's, it's they make terrible editors because it's always like, well, you use a contraction. Well, it's someone is speaking. So yes. come on. But, yes, uh, we can end a sentence in a preposition and we can start right. sentences with with conjunctions. Right. Look at us go. Look at uh, that. <laughs> uh, yes. We, we I mean, we get this evolved. question a lot. Uh, or, you know, my partner has read it and they, they have a degree in English or they used yeah. to teach English third grade. Um, again, I am not, I'm sounding like I'm just coming down on people. I am not be smart. No, I was teachers. the one I coming down teachers. on people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I have a create, I have a creative writing degree in fiction. Yeah. Um, I will still hire an editor to look at my work because yeah. Same. I am too close to it. My brain will fill in gaps. Right. Um, and I know what is in my head. I need someone who is not in my head to read it whether that be a copy edit or a developmental edit. Yep. Um, we, uh, members in the EFA, we tend to stay on top of trends because yeah. trends in publishing change all the time. And that's awesome that you have an English degree from 20 years ago or more, but that's not necessarily going to inform you uh, about what the tropes and the trends are in mystery these days and what's right. been working, what's not, or you know, what the readers may be able to absorb better. Yeah. That's interesting, actually, that the trends, I hadn't really thought about trends and as they would impact editing. Uh, oh, yeah. That is, oh, we talk yeah. about this all the time, especially like words, like we're like, there is editor Twitter and we are yes. often on there being like, are, have we stopped using this word? You know? Yeah. Okay. I have to post this one because I, I, I fear I have kicked a <laughs> hornet's nest. I would like to know why you think English majors are poor editors and that, that I'm was the, you, Kevin. I want to say, the yeah, I'm that. the one who said that. that. <laughs> and I don't think that all English majors are poor editors, but, uh, but the, some of the edit suggestions I get that are among the worst come from people who start with their sentences with, I was an English major. And so that's all, that's all it is. Um, it's, it is a little pedantic. Um, there are, yeah. I adore my colleagues. I adore my profession. I yeah. editor Twitter is actually a fantastic place to be. I love the real time. Ah, uh, help me everybody. I can't find an answer in Merriam Webster or Chicago Manual of Style. Yeah. Is there supposed to be an apostrophe here or not? Right. You know? Right. Yeah. And we get real time answers, but we um there was a point I was making. Uh pedantic. Um yeah. there we do have some colleagues who can also be pedantic about it. And people who are so mired in that no, it must be this way in the rules. Granted, I'm a fiction editor, so is Kristen Tate. Yeah. So we have a little more leeway. Um there, there are no hard and fast rules in especially American English. There are fewer yeah. hard and fast rules than there are exceptions. Yeah. Um, you know, we're amal an amalgamation of languages and yes. that is always changing too. language yeah. is evolving. Right. Especially our language. So uh, last comment and then we got to wrap up, but uh, this expresses, I think the idea she, Jen says, I think it's, just, I think that it's just, ah, I'm going to mess this up. I think it's that <laughs> just because you were an English major you're not necessarily a good editor, but you can be if you have the training. And I that's the sentiment uh, I would like us to leave on because yeah, I yes. didn't mean to offend any English majors. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but anyway. And to go back around to the EFA, like yes. if you are an author or an English major yeah. and you think you want to be an editor, which is a fact, like I love my job. This is truly mm -hmm. the, the best job. Yeah. Um, go check out the EFA because that's where you can get training and, and learn how to be a good editor. And again, that's the hyphen EFA.org. You did. That's where you can go. And um, you guys have like training materials and things like that, you said? Yep, absolutely. There you go. Classes, so even yeah. if you're just interested in becoming an editor, that might be a good thing to uh, to go and 
dip your toes into. So or reach out to one of us. We'll be happy to chat with you. And, and speaking of direction. reaching out to one of the two Kristens here, uh, here are their web addresses on, on your screen now. Kristen edits. Yes. Kristen edits.com. I inserted an extra E in there, Kristen. So I edited Kristen on the fly. It. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> wait, what? No. Uh, Kristen edits.com and the blue Garrett.com. So. Everyone go and check if you're not out. sure, you, you can also like we are very familiar <laughs> with getting an email that's intended for one or the other. So yeah, get, get one of us and say we'll do we right steal each other's clients. Say, that's hi, Kristen, and go from there. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. Well, thank you both for putting up with my dad jokes and my criticism <laughs> of English majors. Uh, and thank you for being on the show. You were both great. Uh, I think there was a lot of great information here. So really appreciate you taking the time. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, this is a pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting us. You got it. Everyone else, thank you for tuning in. Uh, as always, if you are interested in finding out more about uh, upcoming live streams, make sure you bookmark ddlive.com uh, and follow us on all the various uh, platforms. If you type in basically anything slash draft to digital, uh, you're probably going to find us. If, if you don't find us, uh, let us know because we should probably be there. So, uh, beyond that, thank you for tuning in. Tune in next week. We're going to have another one of these lined up and, uh, we'll see you all next time. Take care. Bye everyone.